Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for joining us on the couch today. We are glad you're here. We're super excited. We have a very special guest. But before I do her introduction, um, if you have not, please leave us a five-star review. And if you feel so inclined, a nice worded review so we can read it on the air. We love to get those from y'all. Um, shout out to Nanero for the last one that we had, which was super lovely. Um, but today, oh, go ahead. I was also going to say we still want to remind you that we're starting next week with um, including some of our call-ins into the show. And so we do have a phone number now. You can call us at 323-505-2030. Um, leave us a message. Ask us, you know, if you are looking for some advice around something, if you just want to mention something you learned, a resource, whatever it is. Um, keep it under, like, a minute. But leave us a voicemail, and we're going to start including those at the, I don't know if it'll be at the top or the end of the show yet, but... Um, as those come in, me and Carly are listening to them, and we can't wait to include that into our show coming up. So join us on the bouch. And so today, special guest I'm super, super excited to introduce is Coach A, Ashley Hill, one of my friends and someone who constantly inspires me, supports me, and is one of my accountability partners. So big shout out to her. But Coach Ash is an international selling author, an international certified extreme execution coach, a cannabis graduate student, a certified personal trainer, and helps professionals to identify their superpowers to unlock their full potential. Can we just take a moment to shout out to that bio? Okay, Coach A, I see you. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, so excited to be here. Uh, thank you, ladies, for having me. Yeah, we love it. I'm excited to learn about this extreme uh, execution coaching. Um, so can you start off by just kind of letting us know what that is and what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So I was certified from, uh, by Dr. Eric Thomas. He's uh, one of the number one motivational speakers in the world. And he got a hold of the DISC assessment. It is a tool that identifies your preference for your preferred behaviors. It was um, created by this guy named William Marston in 1928. He also created the polygraph machine and the uh, character Wonder Woman. So everything that he is associated with is about people being their true authentic self. And so the tool is a 15-minute little questionnaire type thing that allows you to identify your superpowers uh, also to identify some of your blind spots or some of the limitations that you might have in certain environments or situations. That's pretty cool. And I'm familiar with um, E.T. As, as a lot of people probably know him as E.T. the Preacher, I think is what he used to go by. Yeah, um, yeah. But like he's been around for like a long time with his videos and all that. So is this something new that he started or like what, you know, is this just an extension of yeah. his message he's always had? <clears throat> yeah, he has been. um speaking I think like 20 or 30 years now and it's something more recently maybe within the last uh seven to ten years that he got a hold of um and then has now created a community of coaches around it his goal is to get the disc assessment into two billion minority households and he knows that even of his accolade and with his success like he can't do that he needs a team and so that's why he created the Extreme Execution Certification Program, because there's so many different lanes, so many different avenues that people can utilize this tool. And, um, and, and so he needs help. And so that's, that's kind of where the program came from. That's pretty cool. And I keep hearing you mention DISC, but can you tell the listeners like what that means and what that is? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of the breakdown, it's the D, the I, the S, and the C. And so the D, it measures your preference, your preferred behavior when it comes to being decisive or making decisions. The I represents your preference, your preferred behavior when it comes to influencing or interacting with others. The S represents your preference, your preferred behavior when it deals to the pace and the environment which you like to work. Typically, the higher the bar, the more slower or single task focus to pace. The lower the bar, the more quicker or more multitask focus to pace. And then the C represents your preference or your preferred behavior when it comes to systems and procedures. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about a DISC assessment, D-I-S-C, 
what we're doing is we're learning about ourselves in different environments or like how we react or or what like how we absolutely. interact i guess with with different uh, environments absolutely Mm. Absolutely. So, and and I'm familiar with disc assessment, but I usually um, tend to think about it. And me and Carly have like taught courses and um, mm-hmm. talked about it in our podcast more so towards like productivity and like work. I think and and like dealing with other people in those types of environments. Um, so I'm I'm actually interested because to me I think about it like that, but it sounds like you're using this as like some overall like um, improve your whole life with the disc assessment. Absolutely. Just in terms of like being able to be aware so you can identify if it's a personal situation or if it's a business situation, but being able to identify which key to use uh, for which situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and by key, I mean the D, the I, the S, and the C. Those are four different keys. Okay. And so you, and you coach people on, in this space, correct? Correct. So, I do. so why do you uh, feel like so people pers- need it? Uh, people want it. People are not everybody, but um, you know, there's there are certain like minded people or people that are looking to go to the next level, or they've been working at something for so long and they haven't been able to see any results or any change. And so, when you're looking to actually self assess and now become more aware of like, okay, these are what my strengths are. These are what my limitations are or my temporary challenges. That assessment is going to allow you to identify that. And so once you become aware, you can now then put yourself in a position by getting coaching uh, to be able to work with someone to identify how we can overcome these temporary challenges. How would someone know that they're ready for a coach? Like, at what point am I like, okay, like you said, yeah, self-assessment. Okay, I assess myself, but how do I know if, like, I'm yeah. just, you know, how would I know that I, I need a coach? Man, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Uh, I mean, even Denzel Washington has a coach. Uh, EP has a coach. People that are of high-level success, they still know that they have blind spots. And so they want to make sure that they have someone on their team that's going to help them identify what those blind spots are and then work together to create a plan around that. What's the difference between a coach and an accountability partner then? Like, I mean, if I have someone to hold me accountable, like what's the difference with that in a coach? Uh, man. So, I mean, it, there's levels to it, right? And in terms of like the investment amount. And even if I have someone that I'm going to, Hey, can you hold me accountable to going to the gym or text me when I go to the gym? Like, yeah, that's great. But in terms of being able to have someone that is holding you accountable, but also to um, also to really just providing that advancement and that education around identifying the environment and giving you certain tools or different things that you can use to overcome that environment or that temporary challenge that you're running into. Yeah, it's a big difference in like, hey, help me stay accountable to going to the gym and having somebody who's giving you your workouts or meeting you at the gym and like working with you and who knows what they're doing and has the knowledge and and also is actually paid to be there. And so it's consistent because if you ask me to hold you accountable, cool. But like, I'm I'm not about to do the extra work and wake up every day to text you like, you know, at some point you got to be on your own. So um, I think the biggest difference is probably the investment and just like the difference between talking to your friends versus actually getting a, a real therapist who has been educated and mm-hmm. knows the system and knows different things that, you know, everybody might not be able to catch. Yep. Yep. No, absolutely. There's levels to it. Mm-hmm. There's levels to it. Yeah, I think the investment in the coach, like, but also in yourself, like that, I think that's how you know that you yep. are being honest, like that you really want to take it to the next step because you're investing time, investing money and energy into that. Yep. Okay, so there's yep. a person. It's, it's, oh, go ahead. It's real quick. It's similar too when it comes to like uh, personal training. That's something that we experience as well. Um, you know, just having someone like you mentioned likes to go to the gym with versus investing in a trainer. That's going to, you know, make sure that you show up, <laughs> hold you accountable to showing up. Also, too, giving you meal prep or meal plan ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, there's different levels to it. So there's a person, they've self-assessed. They're like, okay, I'm ready. They've invested in a coach. So can you walk us through, like, what is your process with coaching? What does that look like? I know you mentioned environment, but, like, what does that process look like? So it's really every client is different. 
So I'm intentional about addressing the needs of what it is that they might be looking to do. I've had uh, clients before, they're like, hey, I want to start a podcast. Okay, cool. We take the information that I get from the assessment. We identify what those strengths are or what those uh, and what those possible limitations may be. And I coach them through um, the next steps that we need to do in order for them to complete the goal that they have over the next six weeks. Um, over, you know, a couple of months. It just depends on what the client is looking for. Um, Does in the terms client of need to, to know? That goal. Do they need to know what they're looking for or have a specific type of goal um, in order to nope. start coaching with you? Nope, no, nah, they don't. Um, it, it's really utilizing the assessment and then they are able to unlock and get a certain awareness of like, okay, this is what I want to do. And how can you help me get to get to that uh, that space? And so it, it just depends on, uh, you know, what what their ultimate goal is, whether that's like, OK, now we meet on a monthly basis or if they need more consistency, we can be biweekly. Um, it just kind of depends on on the client and the situation. And what is your game plan? Like, how does that look like week to week? Do you kind of create like a special plan for each person? And, and how are you like yep. helping them figure things out? Yeah, initially we go through uh, three to four different stages. So the first one being awareness, um, the next one being acceptance, and the next one being alignment, and then the next one being uh, action. And so there's homework to do where action steps moving forward throughout all those sessions. Uh, but that's kind of the stage in which uh, I tend to take clients through. Can you walk uh, us through those when, stages? <laughs> like what they mean? Uh, or, or like, like what is somebody supposed to get yeah. out of each stage, maybe? Yeah. yeah. I don't want you to give uh, us the so whole book. I know, I know. <laughs> look, don't read, out, don't read out the manual. But, you know, just yeah, so we yeah, understand, yeah. like, what's the transformation with, mm. you know, self-awareness and then alignment. And then, you know, with each one. Yeah. So in terms of... Uh, yeah, the awareness is like someone could not know or understand why they may be so emotional or why they may have certain trigger, triggers uh, that cause them to react in an emotional stance. And utilizing the assessment, I can identify that you're driven by people. You're a flight attendant or a ground crew. And like, because that's your driver, that's how you tend to respond or react in certain situations. And so being able to now have that awareness uh, to where... You, you now know that I'm driven by people. I tend to be really emotional. I need to identify, is this the right key for this situation when it comes to dealing with business or when it comes to dealing with systems or different things like that? And then in terms of the, uh, what's next, the uh, alignment, no, the acceptance. So, like, you can't, if you don't know that you know, that you don't know, that you don't know, <laughs> then, like, and you're not ready to accept it, then there's not really much that we could do because there's going to be a lot of pushback. There's going to be, um, you know, just not thinking like, oh, this isn't working. It could be some inner work. I do a lot of work with affirmations and um, self-talk and, and really like being aware of the thoughts that you're having and what it is that, you know, is producing that in terms of environment um, and different things of, of that nature. And then so we did awareness, we did acceptance, and then alignment, making sure that what it is that you're saying, the goals that you have, that your everyday actions are aligning up to that. Because if they're not, then there, there's something that's off there. And we know that you're not going to be able to get to where you want to be if your actions and your thoughts aren't aligned with the goal and what it is that you want to do. Even if you're not making a tremendous amount of progress, if you're still going in that same direction, then we know that eventually you're going to be able to get there. When we're going the, the opposite way, then, you know, there's some things that we have to identify there. And then the last one with the action. Uh, the action is, is very important, which is why after every session they have uh, homework to do, uh, just because we have to put it in application. Like information changes situations, but it's really the applied uh action of the information that you receive that's going to be able to ultimately change uh, your life. I love that. So all of those phases, it's awareness, acceptance, and alignment. Alignment and action. No, we missed one, didn't we? Isn't it five or four? Only four? Okay. Four. Okay. 
I like that. So that sounds like a good process that um, you can go through. Is it with any goal or just with your life period to just kind of yep. um, see where to get more aligned, I guess, in general, huh? Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, personally or professionally, um, like I mentioned, I had clients that I, I'm helped uh, empower and encourage them to start their own podcast. Um, I've also had uh, business professionals help them create or generate additional streams of revenue. Like they didn't do anything different. It was really their uh, mentality and the mindset of actually believing like, oh, I can do this uh, and being able to see those results. That's great. And so um, I know one of the things that I like to say when I talk to people is I tell them like my, my certain superpowers that I have and like so they get a feeling for, you know, where I really like to focus Um my efforts when it comes to like working with people. And that's something I think you have in your mm -hmm. training as well, right? Where you talk about kind of helping people figure that out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the disc assessment is a tool that definitely helps jumpstart that. And then it's also to just listening to their language, understanding, you know, the challenges that they might be experiencing and how we can create a plan uh, around that to support it. Um, Ashley, what are like some of the, most frequent kind of things that you hear from people when you're coaching them and like, like what types of excuses and stuff. Like is a lot of people like, Oh, you know, I don't have time or, you know, they don't think they're good enough. What kind of things yeah. do you feel like you see the yeah. most? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that people are kind of, that's really the blockers. Like they think is this, but it's really like yeah. these fundamental things. What does that look like? Self doubt. Um, for sure. That that's one of the, uh, the biggest ones. And I think that that's why my, um, uh, the client base that I have, I'm intentional about being able to educate and empower them. Like, that they can do it. Everything that they want to do, everything is already within them. They have the value. They have everything they need. Uh, so self-doubt, uh, yeah, time management for sure um, is one of the temporary challenges that a lot of people mm -hmm. have. Consistency. Um, so, yeah, those are pretty, yeah, pretty much the top three. And then you're helping them break through those by helping them to like break through why those are issues in the first place. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And so Sound identifying like, like, what like, that works. like a therapist. <laughs> yeah. 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 Being able to identify what works for them and being able to also identify what their challenges or temporary uh, limitations might be. Now that's, so that's one of the things, um, so there's four stages, but then I was also talking to Ashley before the episode, like, well, what do you want to share about coaching? Because coaching envelops so much and there's so many things we could go so many different ways. And so strengths and limitations, like helping people own their superpower was one thing she said was super important. Another one was awareness of your environment. Can you talk us through a little bit of what that means? Like those liabilities? Yeah, man. It's, yeah, absolutely. Um, Man, the environment is one of the biggest uh, stages probably after the mindset and mentality because if you want to lose weight, for example, but you're in an environment where people are constantly eat, not eating the right thing or they're eating out or eating fast food, uh, it's going to make it a lot more challenging for you to do what you said that you want to do versus being in an environment where um, people are, you know, they're on the nutritious aspect where they're eating a lot of fruits and veggies and meal prepping and having salads and different things like that. So you have to make sure that with as much as you can control that your environment is going to be conducive to your goals. And so being able to identify what those assets look like, the people that you're Carly, the people that uh, are like, Hey, let's go work out. You know what I'm saying? Carly, be, man, she be giving me all the time, but that's a whole nother uh, podcast. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So identifying those people that are assets, so people that are looking to, um, you know, help you go work out with you or meal prep with you or sending you videos for workouts and stretches and different things like that versus people that may be, uh, uh, ask, no, 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 I'm liability. Um, being like, hey, let's go out, let's drink. Like, ah, that's just not my season right now. So being able to identify the people that are in your environment that are asset or liability, or it could be like TV, the things that you do um, on a day-to-day -day basis that may be an asset or a liability, and being able to uh, do what you need to do 
to set yourself up to set the environment up for success. I like that because it's such a shift in how you actually live, which is what has to change for you to actually be a different person. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it in previous episodes before, too, where, you know, in order to be doing something different, like you have to be that person. So if we're using the the example of like, you know, going to the gym more or losing weight, whatever that Mm -hmm. is, it's like thinking like, all right, how would this healthy eating person live? And like, you know, certain things they wouldn't be doing, certain people they probably wouldn't just hang with. So like actually living that life, um, you have to know what that looks like and then you have to apply it like all around your surroundings. So I think that is so important. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Another thing that um, you do is help people identify triggers. In this case, what what do you mean by triggers and how does that help people to move forward? Yeah, that, that definitely can speak to the environment um, and certain fits, but also, too, a lot of times um, that fancy your limitations, they come from your childhood or how you grew up or how you were conditioned to think and identifying certain things that may have uh, conditioned you to, to have that kind of mindset or certain things that put you in a space where you're reactive versus being methodical and logical about certain situations or decisions that you make. And so, um, you know, we all have different triggers around us on a daily basis. So being able to identify what those things are and how you can create a positive um, reinforced uh, action once you experience it. So people, so you help them identify it. And then is it like giving them a process? Like do you, so if I realize that, you know, I have a trigger whenever I get feedback, like maybe whenever people critique what I'm doing and, and I get triggered by that, is that then like, okay, well, here's like a plan of action or here's things to think through or what are some ways um, or things that you give people for those? Yeah, definitely. Um, There's a a exercise that I grabbed from James Clear atomic habit when it comes to like self doubt and um, you know, the way that you talk to yourself. So, identifying when you have those thoughts and placing uh, a paper clip in that empty jar. And so um, you can, I, I've done it with clients like on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis, but identifying and being aware of like, I am having these thoughts and your reaction to that. So how can you now either start to think positively when you have it to transition into that or, um, you know, identify some things that you can do versus um, you're making that, you're making that trigger be known. And it's not just now a subconscious thought. Hmm. No, I like that. It's like a physical representation of what often is just in our heads. Absolutely. Um, Another thing that you mention often um, is whenever we get our disc assessment, it comes out with like two different results. And so Alexi and I have taken it before and talked about it. Um, Can you kind of talk us through what is operating your natural state versus an adaptive state? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Do you guys have like a pen, real quick, pen and paper? Um, nope, nope. You can grab some. Yeah, do nope. you? Okay. You want me to grab one? I can. Yeah, go ahead, okay. real quick. Um, and I and I'll still talk about what it is. So when it comes to like natural state, that's who you are authentically. This is who you are when you're around your friends and your family. Um, you know, you're kind of chilling, doing your thing. You're not thinking about your thinking. You're just operating as you naturally and then you have your adaptive state your adaptive state it can be how you react or respond in certain situations when you're under stress you're under pressure you're being observed or watched so oftentimes it can be a work environment for a lot of people and um and so ideally you want to be able to be who you are at no point in time like it doesn't matter if someone's watching you or if you're under stress or you're under pressure so you would want the, the natural and the adaptive um, bar to be within a, a 15 point ratio or more. And, and that's uh, the difference between like the natural and the adaptive. You guys grab the pen and paper? Yep. Yep. We got our pen and paper okay. or crayon and paper. You guys, and for our listeners, hopefully you had time to get your paper. Yep, absolutely. So I want you to write your name with your uh, non-dominant hand. You guys right handed? Yeah. Left handed? I'm le- I'm right handed. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and write it with your non dominant hand. Let me know when you're done. Hello? 
How much of your the name do you need? Just your first name. Just okay. your first name. Oh, okay. Done. Done. Yep. Okay, and then write it with your dominant hand. Just your first name. Done. Done. Mm-hmm. So how how was that experience? Mm-hmm. What did you think or feel when you're writing it with your non-dominant hand? It was much slower. <laughs> um, I I was like, ooh, and then started writing really slowly. It was much more thoughtful for me. Like I had to think about yeah. like how to make the shapes. <laughs> yeah, um, more focused and um, less comfortable, more unfamiliar. Yeah, absolutely. And then what about with your dominant hand? Uh, Didn't really think about natural it. Natural because it's automatic mm-hmm. and instinctual. Muscle memory. Yep. Absolutely. And so it's the same thing with the natural state and your, what you're comfortable with, what you can do, your subconscious wiring, what that looks like, and then your non-dominant being that adaptive state, how you're operating in certain situations where it's just not natural. It, it drains you a little bit more. It takes a little bit more focus. It takes more time. And so being able to identify certain situations where you can, depending on your results from the, from the assessment, where you can align and, and have that natural and that adaptive align to where you're you all the time and you're operating at your highest self. But adaptive is already you changing a little bit for your environment, right? And so, so what yep. is it that you're training in these, this adaptive space? Like you're, you're kind of training to not be yourself, aren't you? You're looking to close that gap. So you, you want people to be able to operate where they're confident, where they're dominant, which is going to be that natural state and to get out of that adaptive. Um, for me, I can give you an example from my chart, right? My, um, my F, which is the pace in the environment that I like to work in, naturally it's high. It's like a 77. And then my adaptive, or it's like a, maybe like a 57 now on my more recent one. And my adaptive, when I'm stressed or under pressure, I feel like I'm being watched. It's a 10. Wow. So there's a, a huge difference in terms of like how naturally I prefer to work or at the pace that I prefer to work in versus when I'm stressed or under pressure, um, what, what that pace is like. Because again, the higher the bar with the S, the slower, or more single task focus the pace. The lower the bar, the more quicker or the more multitask focus the pace. So I noticed um, immediately if I don't do my morning routine or if I like don't wake up and start my day right, I notice that I feel like I'm behind and now I'm in my adaptive state. I start multitasking. I can't really or I don't really finish one thing at a time, even though I know that that's my preference or my preferred behavior. Like that's where my strength is. Mm -hmm. But because I'm in this adaptive state, I'm, uh, I'm rushing through things. Now I'm missing details or missing uh, dates or deadlines or different things like that because I'm moving so fast and that's not my natural state. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can totally Mm -hmm. identify with that too. It's a total difference when all of a sudden you start feeling rushed or you feel like, Oh man, it's not right on, you know, the way I would like for it to be. And yep. then everything is different. Yep. And so for me, I know I can feel what that feels like immediately when I'm in my adaptive. And I know that in order for me to transition or get back to my natural state where I feel like I'm in control, I need to complete one task at a time. I just need to gain mm-hmm. that momentum of completing one thing. And now I'm starting to slow my pace down and I'm starting to now match being back into my uh my natural state yeah that's exactly what it is so it's i already do that then now um it sounds like being very aware of where you work best or how you work best and then understanding these different areas where you might force to be in or that you may end up in how do you get that back Mm -hmm. to a good equilibrium type space so that's why you're saying it's important to understand the adaptive Absolutely. You um, explained that real nicely. I, I completely understood that. Okay. Shout out to you, coach. Okay. Right, break that on down. <laughs> um, oh, and I want to share. I want to share a personal thing there too. Did you have something else before I go into my story? I don't know. Are you? You're not oh. ending it, are you? No, no, no. Okay. No. Um. So, 
uh, Coach A, you know, has been helping me through some of these things and talk through things. And um, I noticed, so I just want to share like this natural versus adaptive isn't just with process. It's not just with the way you're working. It can also be with people. So like noticing if, you know, you're a very direct person, if you get around certain people or in certain situations, whether it be at work in a relationship yeah. with friends, and then all of a sudden you're not assertive and you're not dominant, but normally you're very direct and open and, and just also noticing it in those reactions. So I think this coaching and this disc assessment and the ways that you can apply it are much more far reaching than just work, which are very easy to understand examples, but also noticing when you're in adaptive state in your life. Like if, you know, in around the people that just noticing the people that you can be your full self around and noticing whenever you're not like, am I triggered or what's going on here? Or why am I showing up differently in these spaces? Yeah. So are, are you saying you worked with her? No, no, no. Uh, she has, um, she, was just her and I were having a conversation oh. just as friends and she used her coaching, you know, expertise okay. and experience to help me realize like, now you're just showing up as a different person in that space. But like, why? And that gave me food for thought, like, oh shit, let me, let me sit here and think about why am I showing up differently just with, you know, with this one friend or in this one project that I'm working on versus every other area of my life. Um, Ashley, is there, is there any reason or, to move from like a D to an I, like do people do that? Um, is that like a goal or is it just a matter of like that doesn't change and you're just identifying what you are and perfecting that or optimizing it, I guess? Yeah, man, it, it definitely is. It, can, it just all depends on the goal. So for me in particular, I did some intentional work about increasing um, my D. I was an IS. And I just knew that in terms of looking at being leadership uh, as a businesswoman, there are some certain things that I needed to do or environment, uh, behavior, characteristics, uh, things that I needed to have. And so I was intentional about putting in the work to be able to help rise that. But at the same time, like, you, we all have all four of these in us. We just have different frequencies or different ratios in which we prefer to um, react to certain situations or which we prefer to behave. And so if you're a high S, like you don't have to become a D, um, getting a team around you, getting someone who like, this is their strength and being able to have them in that area is super effective or just being intentional. If you know that this is a situation or an environment where you're going to have to make decisions, you activate that. You need to be more decisive. You need to be more direct. And so it's only a, a temporary space that you're in where you're activating that certain key that you need for the, uh, the situation. And then you can go back to being in your natural state. I like that. Absolutely. Um, so if people get, like, do you have any, well, let me go back. So if people are, you know, taking this assessment, like getting coaches, do you have any, like, recommendations or like things that you like tell your clients or even like friends like me, you know, who might not be in coaching yet, like recommendations on their journey and like, you know, owning their superpower and on trying to like get in touch with their strengths. Do you have any recommendations or overarching thoughts? In terms of people that aren't, that haven't taken the assessment um, and aren't in coaching? Or people who like may be looking into, you know, taking the assessment and possibly coaching, but are who are, you know, might be starting on their, their self-assessment, self-awareness journey. They might be in phase one. Uh-huh. Yeah, in terms of, like, things to do? Yeah, or things Awareness. To, yeah. Or things. Acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> She's I like, like, I need y'all out of keys. Get the coaching. Like, <laughs> what else y'all want? It's, <laughs> it's $1,000 a day. No, I don't know. Nah, an nah. hour. <laughs> <laughs> right. Get That's your money up and nah, get the coaching. Step to, one. I was trying to make, make, make sure I understood it. But, man, it's really just wanting, having that desire to want to do better, to want to learn more about yourself and want to go to that next level. Um, that, that's really what it is. Yeah, that has to be an underlying thing with everything I'd imagine. Ashley, tell us um, how people can find your site or your coaching or what they can do to learn more about it and or um, chat with you or sign up. Yeah, absolutely. My website is uh, winning. W, I mean, uh, yeah, W I N N I N G dash the number one dot com. Um, and you can uh, follow me on IG H I G H the number three 
R underscore education. Okay. And is there anything else that you want people to know about coaching? Or are you taking on anybody right now? Um, yeah, I, I am taking on a client right now. I'm transitioning to working with corporate spaces within the cannabis industry. That's where my main career has been over the last uh, seven plus years. Uh, so I'm looking to bring this information and these tools uh, to the organizations in a large capacity. But I still take on individual clients as well. Okay, that's great. All right, well, we'll include that information in the show notes as well. So definitely make sure you hit up A. She also dropped some gems. What's the thing you be doing on Sundays? Set up Sundays, yep. Yeah, I just uh, I do a recap of the week. I share my um, experience with the assessment, any kind of uh, situation that may have stuck out to me that week where I used the wrong key or I used the right key and I was able to get the results that I was looking for or I didn't get the results that I was looking for. And... Uh, and, and how I can improve some areas of improvement and uh, celebrating the win. I love it. So make sure y'all follow her on Instagram. Like I said, she be dropping free gems. I definitely encourage you to sign up for coaching. But, you know what I'm saying? If you want to bind or just need a little bit of something, she does that every Sunday. And then we always yep. end the episode with a question of the week. But this is kind of Coach A's thing. She ends every one of her workouts with a question. She asks questions on her BU um, Breathe University. She she asks questions all the time. So we're actually going to flip it on you, and you're going to ask a question to end the episode, A. Eh? So what is your question of the That's week? That's crazy. <laughs> Real quick, before we do that, let's, uh, I don't know how we can figure this out, but let's give out some uh, free assessments oh. to uh, some of your listeners. Let's we do it. figure that out. I just thought about it right now. Um, how, um, how does that move? Is that something they do online? Is that something they would contact you? Um, if they send in is their email PDF? saying like, Hey, Hey, no, it's a, it's a link that I'll send them. Uh, and it takes them right to the site, but you guys pick, uh, five people that they send in their email or they leave a comment or review, however you guys want to do it. Five people that, that will give the assessment to. Okay. Um, so we will say we're going to get, uh, assessments to five people. You say, Ashley, make yeah. sure I don't get the right num wrong number. Okay. And let's do that for what do we want them to do, Carly? Um, if y'all, I would either say, so two thoughts. One is they can, like, interact with us on Instagram, like, sharing sharing things, like, um, like maybe asking questions or what they're trying to do with it. Or, no, like, we need, like, they have to, like, submit a thing or do something. Like, yeah, submit um, a leave a review or. Yeah, I like leave a review. Or do something, because um, I ain't going to see that yeah, on you're Instagram. Right. Probably. So leave a review? That's fine. Yeah. So okay. if you leave a review this week, um, leave a review about how much you like this episode or how <laughs> much you like um, Carly's Couch. Because if you got this far, then it means I guess that means you listened anyway. Shout out to you. Um, and I would say or leave a comment underneath this. How about that? Leave a comment underneath the show notes on this one and we'll be able to pick from those folks. Just let us know um, that you're interested in the assessment and we'll get your information to Ashley. So either leave a review or leave a comment under the show notes and then we'll pick five and send you to Coach A so she can get you started on your journey. Yeah, thanks, Coach A. Shout out to you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Shout out to y'all, man. Um, I love being able to add value where I can. What you guys are doing is uh, phenomenal. Shout out to you for the consistency. I just started a podcast too. So uh, yeah, man, I just appreciate you guys. Thank you. We appreciate Thank that. You. What's the name of your podcast if it's live now? It, yep, it's called Discover You. Discover You. Love it. Yep, B I S T. Yeah, yep. oh, oh, that's cute. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's cute. cute. Um, okay, so what's our question, Coach A? Man, so uh, I'm going to just keep it simple. What is the one word that you need to embrace to reach your full potential? What is one word? that you need to embrace to reach your full potential love 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 that love um yeah, mm, man how oh, they oh, and i'm not good at following directions okay one word that i need to embrace to to reach your full reach potential. my full potential um yep. let's see Dang. 
I'll go real quick. Okay. So uh, give me some more time and being fearless. Mm-hmm. B. I just need to let myself be. Like I be trying to do too much and just knowing that I'm enough and that I have everything already. Just be. Just yeah, take all the pressure off myself and just be. Mm-hmm. So for yeah. y'all, what is one word that you need to embrace to reach your full potential? Add us, um, share on social media. We'd love to hear from you. Carly's Couch, Lextopia, CC Fierce, and then Coach A's will be in the comments if you want to tag her too. Um, that's all that I had. Coach A, shout out to you. I appreciate you. Appreciate the DISC assessments um, and the value that you added to me and to the podcast and to our listeners. <laughs> thank you for being on the show. Yeah, Ashley, we appreciate that so much. And thank you all of you for listening as well. Yeah, no, thank you, guys. Let's win. Let's win. Let's win. (laughs) Bye. Bye.